Welcome back, boys. Got another one for ya. How are we doing on this fine day? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Wherever it is in the world for you. We've got Big Kevin going up against Den Den. You know him as Dennis. And Dennis is going to be playing a civilization he's been playing for a little while. Dennis is sort of known for his... He was sort of known for playing his Hauser. Um, prior to that, I think he played a lot of, like, India. Um, but he's been embracing the DE recently. And he's also been playing a lot of Mexico. So uh, that's good to see because I think, you know, as well as Mexico being one of my favorite civs to play, I think they're one of the fun, most fun civs to watch as well. Uh, they got so much crazy stuff. Half the time, you don't know what, what, what they do. But I think that's part of the fun. That's part of the experience with with Mexico. Whether whether you're playing against them and you don't know. You're like, well, okay, uh, they just revolted and I know the revolt does. Or, <laughs> or you're watching them. You're thinking, I don't know what's going on, but I'm enjoying the ride. And that's all that matters. Dennis is going for starting market and... Starting TP. Looks like he probably sees that 90 wood and he's going to bank on that being able to produce a lot of the wood that he needs for that, that house and for hunting dogs. He's already got enough for the house. So he just needs that wood treasure there and he's got enough for hunting dogs as well. So that's going to be an absolutely insane start. Being able to get the hunting dogs and TP is really, really good. Let's have a look at his deck. Interesting. You know, a, a very like almost Eurocentric deck. You know, he's got same amount of age two cards in age three and then just a few in age four and age one you know very kind of like france brit type you know um deck you've seen uh, he like it, clearly he likes to play a bit more standard with this and that's that's one of the that's one of the glorious things about the civilization you can play without doing any of the revolts you don't have to play any revolt with mexico and they're still really good civ you can play them like a euro civ and they're absolutely you know just as strong almost so that's good to that's good to see that that's uh, that's his style you know that's his style so um yeah really good start from him um we do have the water map so it's a good it's a good map any water map is a good map for mexico just because they have that federal card which gives them boats and a dock per you know the more boats per shipments that you've sent and that just gives that's basically just having like anywhere on average between a seven and eight villager card depending on when you send it which is obviously really, really good. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, let's go have a look over at Kevin, see what he's brewing up. Okay, he's gone for a market start as well. No doubt we can see hunting dogs come in. Um, looks like he's going to do a standard. No, just as I was about to say, standard shop. We're going to see a 17 village up. There was going to be a bit of delay there with the 14 village up. Maybe that's part of his uh, decision making there. But... He, there is going to be a bit of movement with his villagers, which is going to slow him down quite a lot um, if he wants to try and get that age up without any delay into age three. But I think he's going to be fine. He's got hunting dogs. He's already starting to herd. So that's kind of a nice time saver. Yes, it's going to slow him down in total. Oh, what's gone on here? It looks like Denden Den lost his uh, hero there. I'm not sure how that happened. But yeah, but in total, he's not going to have any delay uh, with aging up. So, you know, in that essence... It's uh, slightly, um, you know, more efficient, shall we say. But it is now 3 minutes 43 before he ages up. So he's going to be slow. But sometimes that's okay as Russia. If you're not going to rush hard, which generally if you're going for the 17 village, it means you're not going to be rushing. And that, that's normally the kind of the fast fortress kind of um, type age up. But we'll see. We will see. It looks like uh, that's probably going to be to build... A blockhouse, or is it going to be just a herd? Probably both. Nice Russia skin in there. He's got that bad boy with a pointy hat. He's like the uh, that that film with Dorothy and follow the yellow brick road. Um, the tin can man with the hat. Can't remember what he was missing. Was he missing a brain or was he missing a heart? I think he was missing a heart, right? If I only had a heart. Anyways, enough about that. I'm showing my age there. Padre comes in for Dent. And yeah, it's going to revive his explorer. He's also going to be able to heal him up, but he's going to straight on the road. 
And I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. I'm not sure why that song just popped in my head, but it did. So Kevin does build a block house. He builds it uh, very safe in base. Uh, Dennis, at the moment, doesn't see any of this. He hasn't been able to explore any of this part of the map. He's also getting an explorer here for two straight sheep, which is going to be able to go on his hacienda, but I'd, ra I'd much rather you spend that time scouting. You want to scout as quickly as possible. And Dennis will eventually see this. So he's going to see that, so he's probably going to be a bit relieved, actually. A second block house going down. And what's his shipment been so far? So five hills into 700 wood. Oh, he's gone. Uh, he's starting off cab. Interesting. He's going to be picking up 90 coin there. So he uh, went for a stable, starting stable. Interesting. Did get that church, the cathedral card in age one as well. I'll give him a nice XP trickle. What did he age up with? He did age up with that card. Like I said, the fisherman federal card. 700 gold coming in behind this. Okay. 24 bills. 20 for Russia. He's gone for 700 gold into 700 wood. But is he going to be cab raided? Kevin does have a herd behind his base here, which is always nice. One here as well. He's gone for the double block house. Oh, he's aged up with a logistician by the looks of it. So that's something I did not see. So he's aged up. And so it's really important that you, you did the age up with the 17 vils because that really was no delay then. Because uh, that's going to be 900 food for the for the logistician age up, I believe. I think it costs 900. It might be 800 now. I'm not sure. I think it's 900. But that's going to make all block houses uh, hold more population space. So who needs houses when you can make block houses and they get 15 population each? Church goes down. That's going to give the game away a little bit. This is a classic. This is an absolute classic fast fortress here from Russia. You know, this this type of uh, fortress build um, has been around since the vanilla days. Um, you know, the 2010, 7, 2006 era. You know, I've seen this. I've seen this before. It's been around for a long time. But in DE, it's only been made stronger because it did get buffed. So back in the day, it would give you sort of, I think it was just a load of guard dragoons, but now it gives you counter dragoons, which are even better. They are basically dragoons, but they also counter other dragoons. So it did get buffed. Okay, so he's going to be aging up with the adventurer. In comes the church card now. Has Doesn't have a TP. Dennis is also aging up. That 700 gold was to age up. So a nice sort of semi-FF here by him as well. Now going up with the uh, Michigan Fisherman, and that's going to give him six boats, I believe. So he's going to get a six villager card with a dock. It's not quite as good as villagers, but, you know, if they're very safe and there's no movement, then I guess you can argue it, it is six villagers. So that's a really nice card. Like I said, that's why it's always a good water uh, water deck. It's always good for, for water maps with that age up because it's essentially a three villager card. Uh, look how cute that little Diddy Cross is. <laughs> with how extra all the mexico infrastructure is that is like the tiniest little cross just notice that anyways oh look there's three of them <laughs> okay yet all right okay doc's going down over here neither offensive or defensive just kind of somewhere in between probably be nicer to Perch it over here or here, just so he's got line of sight if his opponent goes to the water as well. What's Dennis making now? So he aged up with... Ah, so he went for the Sonora Quattreros and the Sonora Valleys. Sonora Valleys is a very, very good card. It's basically 25% eco. That's essentially what that is um, for, for, for natural resources. So 25%, so that's basically a quarter... Just it's just like adding a quarter onto your eco, which is kind of insane. Here comes the counter dragoons. So Kevin, he did age up with some strelets, and uh, this 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 shipment here costs one k wood. So for one k wood, he gets a load. He gets nine counter dragoons. We see here they're very similar stats, almost identical, I think, to a a normal dragoon. 
but they have an extra multiplier versus other Dragoons. It's only 1.2, but that's that adds up. You know, that adds up. So that's really, really nice. Gets those counter Dragoons out. You see here that these veteran Dragoons have 29 attack and 241 HP. Uh, these actually have 300 HP and 33. So I think these are more like guard units. Um, so they're basically guard counter Dragoons. So yeah, very, very good. Just needs a way of dealing with those other skirmishes though. Okay, what's Kevin got up his sleeve this time? Okay, now shipping in 19 strelets. Oh! Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of skirms, actually. Skirm goon is the choice. Is the composition choice here by Dennis? Dennis. Oh, oh look at this though. Kevin uh, shipping a load of stuff. And if you saw all of this, you would not be expecting the the kind of um, the industrial play here, which is exactly what he's going for. He's actually being aggressive here as well. And Dennis, Dennis will not be expecting the industrial play there. That, that sneaking that in, being able to sneak that in is very impressive here. Dennis is still trying to raid. Oh, almost found a villager over here. There comes the guard. There comes the engineer, age up. Dennis, though, has been super aggressive. And he knows his, his units have the, the more range, the 18 range compared to Relets with only 14 range. So he can just kite that for days. And that's exactly what he wants to do here. He wants to be aggressive. He wants to kite the units, whitt whittle them down. And Dennis's score, already 3, 4K score up. A lot of that score is being eaten up by this, this age up. So it will bounce back. But look at this now. Starting to expand on the boat on the water as well. Hashienda could be producing villagers here. Currently, it's on food. So Dennis is looking in a really strong spot with this Skirm Goon comp as well. He's also got veteran Chinicos now. Did find this villager over here, so that herd is not going to be herding in. So Kevin, uh, these villagers are, although it's kind of behind his base, and uh, it's risky for Dennis to dive in here, but he could definitely be poking a lot of these villagers. So Kevin in a really difficult position right now. He's got his villagers on berries as well. You never want to be on berries at 13 minutes of the game, but it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Five Chinicos coming in for Dennis. Villagers getting found at the top here. The counter is going to try to get there. The Chinikos are going to back up. There comes the age up and the, the engineer is going to give him two Falconets. That's what he's going to need to deter this, this unit mass here from Dennis. Look at this. Look at this from Russia. Look at that church just changed. Look at that bad boy. It's like a cross between a church and a mosque. Chinikos coming in from the right. Coming in from the east. Backing up to the south. Double raxing, double stable producing Chinikos now. That's dangerous. Especially when he's going, his opponent's going counter dragoons. Don't forget, counter dragoons change all of your all of your shipments um, to counter dragoons as opposed to um, the the goons that they have, um, which is the cavalry archers rather. And uh, nine counter dragoons going in, coming in here. So that would normally would have been nine cavalry archers. But because you send that tech from the church for 1k wood, it, it changes all of them. And now look how impressive that is. So just guard counter dragoons now. And they are just going to absolutely eat up the Chinikos and the dragoons from Dennis. So now all Kevin needs to do is find a way to deal with the skirms. So very, very nice. And look how much he's going. Look how much he's going into gold here. That can only tell me one thing. That he's either going to want to go for the counter skirmishers, which they also get. And I believe that's 2k coin. Or he's going to want to go for this. It, I just love this card because you very almost never see it from Russia. And for 2k gold, which is super expensive. But you get 17 guard hazards. Oh, such a beautiful card. Such a beautiful card. I love how he has uh, Pandors in here as well. 
So basically going for like a skirm goon comp with Russia and making it look good as Kevin does. Dennis is still 4k score up though. Only 29 villagers compared to 51. I hope it's going to be worth it, Kevin. What do you have left in the bag? Does have the option of going for two heavy cannons follow up as well, but it looks like he's going to go for this next. Is he going to be able to get there? And oh, he'll have. Oh, and look at this timing as well. Three blind Colvins come in, and I think that, under normal circumstances, is the perfect play because three is the magic number to take down a heavy cannon in one shot each. But he's not going heavy cannons. He's doing the Uno reverse. He's just playing a complete bluff, and he needs to see those Georgian Hazards because they are going to be a threat. And I think when they get here with a good timing from Kevin, this is going to be scary. Three Colvins coming in. They're going to be so useless here, though. There's a lot of Chinikos, though. And don't forget, there's a decent amount of goons as well. These Chinikos have a small bonus versus other cavalry. So they'll still they'll still trade relatively well. The timing's coming in for Kevin. He's diving in with his units. His units are going to come from that blockhouse, which didn't go down. Only 85 HP. And look at the stats on these bad boys. Georgian Hazards with their beautiful skins. Golden boys going in there. They are doing exactly what they need to do. Is it going to be enough, though? Is it going to be enough? Veteran Chinikos versus Georgian Hazards. He's trading well. The Georgian Hazards, they put up a good fight. But was there just too much mass there from Dennis? But oh my goodness me. What a trade from Kevin. And look at the score. All of a sudden, still one of them left. What a beautiful unit shipment that was. Wow. And both of these left with similar masses left. Still one Falconet as well. Ho, ho, ho. Now he gets to follow with the two heavy cannons. That's perfect. And now all of the... Now there's nothing to counter those, those heavy cannons anymore. Unless he makes more culverins, which are super expensive. Free culverins is 1,500 resources. Guard Strelet's coming in now as well on top of all of this. Kevin, oh, the Georgian Hazar mass was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And look at that Russia flag. I think that is well and truly deserved after that. 35 bills compared to 59. He's buffing. He's getting guerrilla tactics. That's going to buff the skirmishers. He is going for more culverins. That's going to cost him, though. He will get the magic number, which is free out as well. Boom. You just got to love the sound of the heavy cannons. In come those culverins. Is Kevin going to see them? He does see them just about. Is they going to get shot off? He is. One goes down. Boom. But he's going to kite back with the heavies. Oh, but nice micro from Dennis. And Kevin pushes back. Tries to get a couple of sneaky shots on the saltier doors. But it didn't pay off. And uh, down go those two heavy cannons. Factories now left for Kevin. Does have guard stilettes. Still has decent amount of guard counter dragoons. But look, there's a lot of them that are weak there. Would definitely be worth getting a priest to heal them. Okay, starting to make some cavalry archers now. Again, continue with the skirm goon. Absolutely love this play. This industrial turtle play from Russia. You just got to love DE, man. Russia just known for being a pure rush sieve every single game. But Kevin showing... That they're more than a one-trick pony. And I just love these type of games. Kevin's still on berries, though. Where are the herds? He's got one over here, which is eating up. He's got another over here, which is starting to herd. Another over here as well. They are easily raidable, though. Kevin going to get kited here, but these units just so cheap. Look, 38 food and 10 wood for each of them. So they can just walk up and take a few losses because they're so cheap and efficient. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he, went, uh, he went invisible there. That was interesting. 
And I think with Guerrilla Tactics, they might get a big button to be able to do that. Chinico's flanking in with 10 of them as well. The Counter Dragoons are going to have to do some work here, but they're going to get sniped by the Skirmishers. So they're going to go down. Only four of them left, look. But more Cavalry Archers coming in to try and save the day. Going to lose most of this mass of Strelets. Trying to turn a corner here. Figuratively and literally. Try and get back into this game. But this is going to be tough now. Kevin down 4k score. And all the Chinicos just about go down. Oh, but a big mass of them coming in. How's Kevin going to deal with this? He's starting to make more cavalry archers, but that's going to take a long time before they get here. These saltier doors have been buffed. They are tough. He sees the Chinicos now. He's backing up. He gets his explorer back. That's going to have an eye of the assassin crack shot. He takes one of them down. Miniman coming in. He's trying everything possible just to deny these Chinicos before the the cavalry archers. He's just trying to buy time for the cavalry archers to get there. And the Minutemen, the crack shot attack. More Strelets getting pumped out here. Is it going to be enough time? The cavalry archers come. They are guard as well. And they're called Devorians. Devorianin. Devorianin. Oh my god, that's probably the worst yet. Still has free culverins, so these factories can't really be producing heavy cannons. It won't be very effective. 45 bills for Kevin. Dennis is on 72. Even getting some native posts gone for a second TP now down here. He's got lots of boats on the water, about 15. Now he's going for Sonora Valleys. Like I said, that's going to add 25%. Minus the boats. It doesn't work for boats, I don't believe. It's only villagers, but for the 50-odd the villagers that he has, that's going to be like having uh, an extra 12 villagers. Because it's essentially 25% of, of your eco on land. More goons coming in for Dennis. That's going to be a huge eco boost. He's looking so strong right now. But, he's, but Kevin's hanging on. He's got two factories. And you can't put a price on that. Look at that. About 10 villagers. Anywhere between 8 and 10 villagers. He's finding some villagers. But Chinicos are going to get caught out by the cavalry archers. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Let's call them cavalry archers. And, and Dennis not paying attention. Yes, he takes down a few villagers. But was that worth it? It probably was worth it considering how, how strong his eco is. And now look at this. Pandors are coming in. Kevin is pushing. He's pulling no punches this game. And are we actually going to see? Wow, we're actually going to see an explorer kill a villager. That is probably the first time I've ever seen that happen. They do two villagers, two damage apiece. <laughs> he actually got, got a kill there. Pandors are coming in. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Pandors counters everything here. Pandors are going to do work versus Saltier Doors. If anyone doesn't know, Pandors are our anti-skirmisher, skirmisher unit. So they have bonuses versus skirmishers. A, a, a very big bonus versus skirmishers as well. Kevin just being forced into berries this whole game. He's just been on berries at one point or another. In come these Pandors and look at this. 2.5 bonus. So they do what? 60 odd damage, 65 to 70 damage versus, let's work it out, 70, 72, right, 0.5 is 12, no, 62, uh, maths for the insane, god, that was like the most basic maths and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, <laughs> Uh, I was actually quite good at maths at school. Believe, believe it or not, but when you when you try when you're under pressure like this, it's uh, it's not easy. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. Moving on, Lionheart with a low IQ. Nice sniping going on here. 
These Pandors, they do have... What's the range? Yeah, 20 range. Uh, they're actually going to outrange the Salty Duels as well. So not only will they absolutely smash them, uh, basically two hit them, right? Um, yeah, no, fr uh, almost two hit. So they free hit these Skirmishers. And these Pandors have 40% range resist as well on top of that. So yeah, pretty huge. And with the counter infantry rifle ring, I think the they might get even more bonus as well. But I tell you what though, Culverins will do work. Culverins will do work versus them. Now it's Dennis, it's time for the two heavy cannons. He has gone to age four. No revolts this game so far. He's just going straight for the age four, playing a super standard. These are, these are, look at these cavalry archers as well. 411 HP. Wow. Now we've got vigilantes. Someone call the vigilante. But they still, oh, they've got, they get 20 range now. So they've got the same range. Oh, lifeguard Jaegers. I didn't even see his gold. Oh, this is the final tech. The final tech, I believe. Well, the final unit tech from the the church card for Russia. So you, uh, uh, other than the 1K wood for the counter Dragoons, for 2K gold, you get counter skirmishers or counter Jaegers rather. And these things are basically Pandors. And because of that counter infantry rifle ring, look, they now have 3.5 multi versus light infantry. That is insane. Along with his Pandors, they also get benefit from the counter infantry rifle ring. And look at these things. They do so much damage now. Basically 100 damage, almost 100 damage. And he's just going to go for it. No cauldrons involved. He's just going to go straight in for the heavy cannons, which is super risky. Look at that quintuple kill. But he does manage. He takes. He knew he was going to take some hits there. But he finally takes down those heavy cannons. And now after that, I'll tell you what. He's going to destroy this. He's even got a mix of some strats in here as well. And they trade well. Look at how cool these units are with those furry hats. Pandors with those top hats as well. Very Turkish of them. Look how cool these unit skins are. Look at them smashing the units. The vigilantes. Wow, very, very impressive. Along with these tanky ass cavalry archers. This is starting to look really good for Kevin. And look at the scores. Super close now. Kevin hasn't even shipped cavalry combat. So he can ship that as well to make these cavalry archers even better. Wow. This game. Kevin putting on a show. Actually up in score, I think, for the first time in the game. All the, all the food and the water almost gone now as well. That's something to take into consideration. Wow, look at this. These, but he needs something more than Skirm Goon here because he's got no answer to these counter Jaegers. These things do 70 damage to Skirmishers. 30% range of this. So they're not quite as good as Pandors, but they're not far off. And there comes Cavalry Combat. Look at that. It's going to give him 15% more hit points. Dennis very much over this side of the map as well. And look at this. Had access to both of these gold mines. So he's just been benefiting so much from Sonora Valleys as well. Which is just eating those gold mines up. Natural resources going nom, 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 nom. Seconds, thirds, desserts, you name it. He is eating, gobbling it all up, whilst poor Kevin's been on berries for most of the map, for most of the game. Still on berries over here. But he's making this work. Falconet's coming in to try and save the day for him. But Kevin is going to back up just in time. Only one shot going off there. And look at that mass of heavy, of uh, cavalry archers. Now 451 HP. Wow, are we wow. They do 46 damage to artillery as well. So that's something to take into consideration. Probably isn't going to want to go for Culverins. Just going to rely on his cavalry archers. And uh, Wall just got built here. And uh, you've got to be careful he doesn't get trapped there. Kevin, there's no gates for you, Sunshine. And these things do not have good siege attacks. So he will not be taking that down anytime soon. Wow, we've got a uh, ironclad coming in here for um, Dennis as well. And Oh, he's going to get sandwiched. But, funnily enough, that kind of works well for, for Kevin because he's just presented himself 
with the falconets. Okay, you, you want to get trapped. That's fine by me. I'll let myself get trapped as long as I take down your falconets with me. Wow. And uh, back to square one again. In come all of this anti-skirmish mass. Still has 11. 11 counter Jaegers along with three Pandor still. Wow, those guys putting in work. Dennis, though, overtaking in score once again. Kevin only on 58 villagers. He's trying his hardest. Villagers over this side of the map. Dennis is on 92. Almost double the eco with Sonora. Um, Sonora Valleys as well. It's just kind of crazy right now how, how much superior his eco is. He shipped both factories as well somewhere. Yeah, so second factory going down. So Kevin doesn't even have the extra advantage of the two factories. And I love, I love how well this synergizes, adding these Pandors and uh, counter skirmishers along with, um, along with Strelets because Strelets kind of they because they have less range, they will go closer to the opponent. And if your opponent is just attack moving, then they're just going to be killing the Strelets, and that's what you want to happen. So the Strelets will be going down, whilst the whilst the counter skirmishers, the counter Jaegers, will be doing all the damage from the bat line. And uh, Kevin going for some heavy horse guns, interesting. Dennis does have a, a, a TP, native TP here with a big rank six Greek revolution there. So that when he ships that, when he presses that big button, that's going to give him 12 units. Maybe even more if he continues. Minimen coming. He doesn't have a way of dealing with these horse guns. These horse guns are doing so much damage. What is going on there? The villagers are building a barracks and he's making some insurgents. Dennis is being sneaky. Dennis is stacking so many resources. Now starting to get some... We're having to rebuild his artillery foundry. That's what he was waiting for. More skirms coming. Just cut. Just pumping, losing so many skirms just to try and deal with this mass of counter skirmishers and Pandors. Kevin does see this. Oh, he's just still on berries. Oh, <laughs> Insurgents trying to come in for the raid, but Kevin does see it, fortunately. So both of them trying to be sneaky. And oh, what is going on here? A stable going down as well, but Kevin trying to counter with the wall. <laughs> I love it. And a couple of heavy horse guns coming in here, no doubt, to try and take down this stable. <laughs> Very sneaky. It's going on everywhere, and this is how you play it in high-level games. You've got to try and just keep your opponent just, just out APM him, try and whittle down his... Uh, his eco as well by just raiding his base. And I think, I don't think these, all oh, these Chinicos, are they going to come out? No, they're not going to come out. That is unfortunate. Kevin also stealing this cow, cow and two sheep. Look how fat these boys are. They need to hit some Weight Watchers groups. They do all the gym at the very least, because my God, they are packing. There was a Harrison's mum joke in there, but I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be better than that. I am going to be better than that. <laughs> the wall's getting cleared now. And now we have 14 units. He's actually got the sacred band to rank seven. And hopefully, Dennis, he sees that, presses that big button before he loses it. There's 14 decent units that will come out of that. Are we going to see it? Kevin's revolted. And Dennis doesn't press the Greek revolution. Loses 14 units for free. Sacred ban units as well. That is unfortunate. But what is Kevin doing? He's doing the Finland revolt. Kevin, do you know what you're doing? Kevin, I've seen him do this once before. And I spoke to him after this game. And I think it was the second time he's ever revolted as Finland. So <laughs> hopefully he's listened to what I said about going Northern Wilderness. So at least he knows some of the decent cards. This is essentially makes all of your uh, your Carolean Jaegers. It turns them into villagers for natural resources. Uh, and the good thing about this, look at this pop as well, 178 pop. And plus, the, the good thing about doing a Finland revolt with Russia is you get to you get that extra 10 population um, bonus that Russia get. Don't forget. So that's kind of insane. An extra 10 pop for, for the revolution. But Dennis is revolting as well, and he's just revolted to Texas. Oh, my goodness me. I called the game of the year the other day for that other double revolt with Karim and Garja. We're seeing another insane double revolt. Is this going to be another contender for game of the year? 
Oh my god, I'm out of breath again. And the scores are still neck and neck. Oh my goodness me. This is like a wet dream come true for me. Revolt after revolt. And so much artillery coming in though. Can these... Can these... Cavalry archers deal with the heavy horse guns? They're going to need to kill them quickly. These Caroline Jaegers are very good skirmishers. But is it going to be enough? We've got volunteers. That's what all the villagers turn into. All the... Oh, there's still one gun left. Heavy horse gun left. This is going to be close. This is going to be tight. Who's going to come out on top? I'm not even sure Dennis has done this revolt before either. I think both of these guys <laughs> are new to these revolts. We've got the sound bug going on here as well. This is how long the game's been going on for. And Dennis shipped the, far, uh, the 14 guard sharpshooter card, which is going to work nicely here. He has lots of buildings, I believe. So shipping the, the villager card will be very good. It'll give him 27, uh, 24, sorry, which is the maximum amount of villagers. And uh, he actually should definitely be shipping 24 villager card right now. But instead, he's decided to go for the two falconet. But no doubt, he's, uh, he's not overly sure on what all the cards do. Do you get access to the big Minutemen as well for 800 resources? And look at this. <laughs> These Caroline Jaegers are going to be gobbling up at two food per second. We'll be putting down those frontier block houses. And this is neck and neck now. Who's going to come out on top? I have no idea. Dennis still has a bit of water eco, which is going to benefit him massively. What's Kevin shipping here? So he's gone for Northern Wilderness and he went for the Armfelt's Autonomy, which does mean he now can make Imperial units. Does he give, um, it gives Imperial Carolians, Imperial Strelets, Imperial Recruits. That's the Musketeer. Uh, it doesn't look like it does give Imperial Strelets. Interesting. So I guess it's only for the Musketeers, right? Does it give it for the Cavalry as well? Jabants, that's the, uh, uh, Carolians Recruits. Wait, so according to this, it's only Recruits that get... Is it only recruits from Russia that are able to go Imperial? I guess uh, Russia, that card only allows Russia to get Imperial uh, Musketeers, which actually isn't that good. Um, so maybe that's not a totally great card for Russia. Um, it's, it's, it's a very good if you revolt from uh, Sweden, because obviously Jabants and Karelians can get Imperial. But only only Musketeers, that seems, uh, seems like that's a bit of a bug. It should definitely be Strelets as well. Uh, this card's very good as well. So the Karelian uh, Jaeger, 20% all actions damage uh, and 20% hit points. And that's for every type of uh, kind of Jaeger unit. So that's a very good card. He's going for Grand Duchy of Finland. I don't think that's a very good card. Some uh, artillery micro going on here. And this one enables Russian Counter Dragoons. Improved Dragoons and Counter Dragoons should only let infantry be training for stables. Oh, okay. That's actually really good then. Um, that's actually really good for Russia. Um, not very good for um, Sweden. That's the funny thing. This this Finland revolt, depending on if you revolt from Sweden or Russia, depends on which cards are good and which ones aren't as good. So we've got Colvin Royales coming in now. But look how much artillery is coming in for Dennis. Kevin is making lots of these Carolean Jaegers. Is that the one thing they're going to suck at is, is cavalry or these artillery? He's bringing in all of the Caroline Jaegers. How many of them does he have? He has 44. He needs to kill those heavy. He needs to kill all this artillery, but there's so much of them. So many of them. Is this going to be all she wrote? Is Kevin going to be able to survive? Dennis is on eight villagers. He needs to send this card. He still hasn't sent this card. But that's good for Kevin. Because Kevin, essentially, his Caroline Jaegers are his eco. He does. Okay, he's going to get 24 villagers. That enables you to make them again as well.
back in the day, that is, was almost unlimited up to like a maximum of 80. So he, he could have been uh, shipping a lot more than 24. But they did get nerfed, unfortunately. Some more Colvins coming in. But Dennis's eco is pretty stagnant as well until that villager card comes in. Kevin, his eco is pretty good. He's essentially got, what, 23, 26 villagers right now? I don't believe they can um, they can go on to uh, mills or estates. But you can constantly ship gold mines with infinite four prospector wagons and finished tiger, which gives uh, uh, lots of uh, trees per torps. So it's never essentially a never-ending natural resources. Um, Kevin can build torps, though, as well. Don't forget. So it's not just Sweden that can build torps. Russia revolting into Finland can build torps now. But I don't think Kevin probably knows that or he doesn't want to spend his wood on torps. His torps would have to go onto, um, onto trees. So there's no kind of mines unless he ships full prospector wagons. He does have 15 elk as well. So again, just constant natural resource cards, infinite natural resource cards that he can send. Does have Black Breeze as well. Other than that, there's not that many good cards. He does have a Fort Wagon uh, with five Prospector uh, Blockhouses. These are the best cards. So you've got, he's got the Jaeger Combat, Northern Wilderness, uh, Armflits Autonomy, uh, and with Russia, Grand Duchy of Finland. I think Grand Duchy of Finland is better than Armfit's Autonomy um, if you're Russia. One Monotone, one Frigate. That's a pretty nice... That's an infinite card as well. That's actually a nice card. Six, uh, eight Hacker Pellets. Scores slightly pulling away for Dennis. They both stagnated a little bit here. Just, just each of them trying to figure out what each uh, revolt does. Dennis, Dennis's eco looking pretty good right now. He still has his two factories, as does Kevin. But he's now got 20, he's now got 32 villagers. What is your he's got Hashienda over here as well. But the eco is still better for Kevin. I always say this, Finland's eco is very recyclable because you make uh, everything costs wood. So these, these Jaegers cost wood to make about 100 wood i believe and they can chop for more of them you can batch train them at five at a time similar to the sansculots from the french revolution and then they, they kind of recycle themselves you can build torps as well these things can make buildings they can build buildings like a villager um so there, there's constant recycling eco torps make more resources and make more wood and more food and you can make more skirmishes and it's just constantly constant constant so that's the really good thing about caroline yeager's however you do need to add a skirmisher, uh, uh, sorry, a dragoon type unit with them, um, which is the counter dragoon. So for Sweden, it's very good to go for the uh, Karelians. With Russia, you want to go for the counter dragoons. Um, and uh, nice, Dennis is countering hard here with Chinikos, diving in with 10 Chinikos. And oh my goodness me, there's so much artillery here, but the, oh no, poor Kevin. All of his Royale with cheeses are going to go down to the cavalry. That was a big brain play by Dennis there. Oh, no. And there's so many Jaegers here. But they are going to go down. Oh, getting tanked here. And there's we've got guard sharpshooters. Dennis still hasn't shipped this card here, which gives him Imperial units as well. So both of these guys not knowing what these do. Which is just absolutely hilarious to me. <laughs> Both these guys having fun. Making more Carolyn Jaegers, but I think with the artillery, there's just not a lot he can do. Unless there's going to be a load of Colvins popping here. Oh, all of those Carolyn Jaegers going down. He's trying to make some more, but that's not going to get up in time. And that is unfortunate. And it looks like Dennis is going to take this. And he's now almost 10k scored down. Poor Kevin. Trying to kite these Chinikos. But that's the one weakness of these Carolean Jaegers. Look at their stats. They got very, very impressive stats for a skirmisher unit. 
considering they only cost 100 wood. And just like that, he calls it. And funnily enough, I actually spoke to Kevin after this game where he was streaming it. And uh, he actually thought these Caroline Jaegers were musketeer units. <laughs> That's how much he knows about this, uh, this revolt. But Kevin, you know, he's been really getting involved in like French revolutions and different revolts. That, and like, I think he's enjoying doing these type of revolts. So hopefully he gets a lot of learning experience doing this revolt now. And we're going to see a lot more Finland revolting from him because it's one of my favorite revolts. Dennis also going with the Texas revolt, not really knowing what it does. Um, but maybe that was a learning curve for him as well. And maybe for the future, he'll know a bit better how that card, uh, how that revolt works. But that was a fantastic game. Another double revolt. And that is just like so much just orgasming for me. Just double revolts. It's just like the it's peak DE. It is peak Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. And I love it. I suckle it all up. And look at that village. <laughs> was actually looking good for Kevin before he revolted. Um, so probably would have been a de probably would have been a win for Kevin if he didn't revolt. Although Dennis still had his uh, his eco advantage, but it was a it was a very very close game. Fantastic game there, Kevin coming up with the the Russia turtle build with the counter Jaegers, the counter skirmishes, the Pandors, the counter dragoons, and it was just so much epicness in one game. Well done, Kevin. You put up a big fight there. Dennis also going for the revolt. Gotta love it. These guys just having so much fun. Guys, I hope you had as much fun as I did, as these guys did. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.